So I think we are live right now and uh, we started recording uh, this talk. So hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and, and good evening wherever you are. We are very delighted and happy to have uh, Mr. Pavel Gura here with us. Uh, Mr. Pavel will uh, introduce today and talk about uh, his experience in building quantum ecosystems. Uh, Mr. Pavel uh, is a scientist, IT specialist, and entrepreneur working mostly on the applications of AI. He is graduated from the Faculty of Mathematics and uh, Mathematics, Informatics, and Mechanics of the University of Warsaw. He is now a PhD candidate. Uh, he also uh, worked as a software engineer uh, in CERN, IBM Research, and Google. Uh, right now, uh, he is one of the organizers of two meetups in Warsaw, Warsaw.ai and Warsaw Quantum Computing Group. And he is also a member of the board of QWorld and QPoland. He is also a founder and CEO of the Quantum AI Foundation, aiming to support the development of AI and quantum computing generally. So uh, I think it's quite an introduction and it's quite a CV. We are looking forward for your, uh, for your uh, talk today. And uh, I think that uh, Professor Jonas uh, would like to say a few words, and then the floor is all yours. Uh, hello, Bavel. Uh, how are you? I'm really glad to have you today with us. Uh, actually, I have to mention that uh, Quantum AI is a partner uh, with uh, Alexandria Quantum Computing Group, uh, and uh, 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 Warsaw Group uh, is, is uh, one of the partners of the Center of Excellence of Quantum Computing in Alexandria University. So we are uh, 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 like a group. Uh, you are one of one of us, I think. Uh, it's not the first time uh, to have you, and it will not be the last time. And we are really happy to have you today, Paul. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you uh, for this very warm uh, welcome and, and great introduction. Thank you for the invitation, this opportunity to give a talk about uh, building a quantum computing ecosystem. Uh, so yeah, hello everyone. And as, as Karim said, uh, I have several affiliations, in fact, which you can see here. Uh, I just uh, wrote down only uh, these affiliations that are uh, relevant to quantum computing uh, currently. Uh, so as Karim said, uh, I'm a founder and CEO of the Quantum AI Foundation, which is a partner, a honorary partner of the uh, Alexandria Quantum Computing Group, uh, as Professor Ahmed Younes uh, mentioned. Uh, I'm also a board member uh, of QWERT, which is uh, an international uh, initiative aiming to support uh, research, collaboration, and education in quantum computing. Uh, so I will be talking later about, uh, about QWERT and our initiatives. Uh, and I'm also coordinator of QPoland, which is one of uh, Q cousins within QWERT, being a part of QWERT. Um, and in fact, uh, today I will be talking about uh, different activities that we organize within all these three uh, initiatives. Uh, so they are a bit uh, different, but uh, they're also very relevant. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's let's start. So so uh, before we uh, discuss how to build a quantum computing ecosystem, and it's, it's good to ask a question why we do that, right? So we are all aware that um, there might be some interesting applications of quantum uh, computing. So, of course, it's very interesting topic for us as, as researchers from a perspective of scientists, mathematicians, computer scientists, physicists. But it's also good to know and remember that there might be uh, some in potentially some interesting and important uh, applications in several domains like uh, cryptography or um, finance, artificial intelligence, transport, logistics. Uh, discovering new materials or new drugs. Uh, so uh, we know that we should um, we should build this quantum computing ecosystem, and we should uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, first of all, there are there might be many different uh, entities, many different uh, uh, partners, organizations, institutes interested in in uh, developing quantum computing technology and also taking advantage. Uh, of, of this technology uh, and uh, in fact it's it's a good time to just get involved uh, in this in this domain and in this uh, ecosystem because we can observe quite an interesting and good uh, progress so several companies have recently announced uh, that they were able to build um, quite quite good um, uh, quantum computers 
so we can see that there is a progress. Maybe it's not uh, as rapid as in case of machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, uh, but uh, I would say that it's a decent progress. So for, for sure we can observe that um, uh, the progress exists and if everything goes, goes fine, then in the next five or ten years, uh, this domain may look um, uh, very different than um, that it's uh, than it's now or uh, than it was a, a couple of years ago. Um, beside the progress uh, in the hardware side, it's also um, good to realize that there are also uh, several software development kits uh, for developing uh, quantum computing programs. Uh, so here I just uh, mentioned a few of them. Uh, but uh, we can we can see that there are many companies working on programming languages or libraries or frameworks for uh, quantum computing. Uh, in some cases, uh, these programs can be run directly or executed directly on the real quantum computers, sometimes only on simulators. Um, but anyway, it's sufficient. It's sufficient to just work on uh, algorithms and uh, think about real world uh, applications. So what might be the future? <laughs> it's a difficult question. So there is a famous quotation. Uh, I think it's uh, attributed to Abraham Lincoln that the best way to predict the future is to create it. All right. So um, if you want to know how the future of quantum computing may look like, it's it's just good to uh, start working on shaping this future because uh, it strongly depends on, on us, on researchers, on entrepreneurs uh, making decisions uh, to which or toward which direction the quantum computing uh, ecosystem uh, should go uh, because uh, we can observe that there are many obstacles uh, despite this uh, observable and interesting progress in the development of quantum technologies we can also observe that uh, there are some obstacles on the road toward uh, a real quantum supremacy or at least uh, real world quantum applications uh, so it's still difficult to isolate qubits from, from the environment, right? So the problem of the coherence still exists. Error correction, right? So we have more and more physical qubits, but uh, it not necessarily mean that uh, we have more logical qubits that can really improve uh, the power uh, of, of our machines. Uh, in terms of algorithms, um, uh, there are many interesting research papers and uh, scientists discover better and better algorithms but uh, in many cases it's still even difficult to prove that quantum algorithms will be better than classical algorithms so even in case of the famous Shor's algorithm we know that uh, okay we may have quantum algorithms uh, able to factorize uh, numbers uh, in polynomial time but uh, we still cannot formally mathematically prove that we cannot do that in polynomial time on classical computers. So this is just assumption in which we believe. And based, based on that, uh, we use some uh, cryptography protocols, but uh, we have it's, it, it hasn't been proven. It hasn't been proven uh, formally. Uh, so there was uh, an interesting case with recommendation uh, problem when it was expected that uh, uh, this problem uh, is uh, not solvable in polynomial time on classical computers. Uh, and uh, there, was, there also existed uh, a quantum algorithm able to solve it in, in polynomial time. But at some point, uh, Scott Aronson proposed to his student to start working on this topic and uh, trying to prove that indeed this is a problem in which we can uh, achieve the quantum supremacy. But the student uh, found a polynomial algorithm um, for classical computers that was inspired by a quantum algorithm. Uh, which is again another uh, reason why we should work on quantum algorithms and quantum computing domain so that even if we eventually um, don't achieve the quantum supremacy it may turn out that we'll discover something new maybe some new laws of physics uh, or some new uh, polynomial time algorithms uh, so uh, building some quantum gates and in general quantum uh, quantum devices is, is still challenging uh, and there are, I guess, many other uh, obstacles that uh, we can think of. So, uh, yeah, for example, uh, so beside these technical limitations or technical obstacles, uh, there are also organizational obstacles, right? And this is one of the reasons why we should build a quantum ecosystem and we should uh, think how to organize it in an efficient way. So 
Uh, this is rather obvious, so we need quantum competences. Uh, so that's why we need education. So that's why we need to organize lectures, workshops to uh, just teach uh, people at least the basics uh, about quantum computing and uh, not only to just educate um, the new researchers, but also entrepreneurs and potential users of, of uh, quantum computing uh, applications. We need to develop uh, quantum technology, uh, both uh, hardware and uh, the theory uh, algorithms, right? So uh, we need to do a research and we need to organize it in an efficient way. Uh, we would like to have real world applications because otherwise someone may ask why we really do that. If there will be no uh, real world application, then uh, maybe this is just uh, very interesting from theoretical point of view, but one uh, someone outside of the uh, academia should uh, should bother, right? So it's it's also not sure uh, where exactly there might be real world applications and when we can really expect a quantum advantage or uh, advantage of using quantum technologies. Uh, but we already expect that there might be at least several uh, such areas. We need funding, so to both develop quantum technology to organize education. Uh, and uh, to work on real world applications, uh, startups, we need finding uh, from both private and public sector. Uh, but uh, what is probably most important is uh, we need people, right? So uh, in order to just uh, solve all the problems uh, that are currently on the road toward quantum advantage, quantum supremacy, uh, we need competent people uh, working on, on these problems. Uh, so that's why it's important to build and organize a quantum computing ecosystem. And uh, this ecosystem, uh, in my opinion, should be composed uh, or built based on uh, these four pillars, let's say. So people, education, research and business. So in the previous slide, I also mentioned uh, funding, but of course, funding is something that is might be very helpful in, in many cases. It's it's necessary, but uh, it's, uh, it's 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 rather um, it's something rather that we would like to have, that it's nice to have, but uh, but for sure uh, we can organize and we can do many things uh, even without an external funding. Uh, so what we already do now uh, in Poland and within QWERT internationally, so I will tell you about several initiatives uh, in which I'm, I'm involved. So one of them is Quantum AA Foundation. So this is a, a, a non-profit organization established in November 2019. Uh, so as you can read on our website, we are a charity organization aiming to support development and collaboration in science and new technologies, especially artificial intelligence and quantum computing, but also other fields of mathematics and computer science and uh, science in general. Uh, so, as you can see, we just don't restrict ourselves only to quantum computing uh, because uh, we believe that supporting uh, science in general is, is valuable. And uh, for example, sometimes it might be even better or easier to just focus first on um, artificial intelligence or some other uh, other fields. Uh, but uh, our current activities are mostly uh, focused on organizing uh, quantum computing meetups, uh, more concretely Warsaw Quantum Computing Group meetups and QPoland workshops. Um, so I will tell you later about the workshops that we organize as, as QPoland, uh, but first I will tell you about the meetings uh, of the Warsaw Quantum Computing Group because uh, uh, on Monday, on 29th of March, uh, we'll have uh, the next such a meeting. It will be episode 25. And our lecturer will be our uh, today's host, uh, Karim El Safti, and he will tell us uh, about uh, quantum machine learning. So if you are interested, I also invite you uh, to join, to register. So as you can see, we've already organized uh, 24 such uh, meetups, webinars, episodes. Uh, we partner with several uh, organizations like uh, Alexandria Quantum Computing Group, uh, as a foundation, beside honorary patrons, we also have strategic partners uh, who are in fact our uh, um, donors, our sponsors. They just support us financially, so that's why we can also or potentially organize uh, better events. That was especially important before uh, the pandemic crisis when our events uh, were uh, stationary, right? So just after the lectures we had um, 
uh, we had a networking and after party giving people the opportunity to just uh, discuss some some interesting ideas uh, and um, we also had a, pre a professional recording of the meetings and, and the videos were later available on our, our our YouTube channel. So currently everything is simpler because everything is online and it's possible that we'll just keep this online only form uh, also uh, in the future, just uh, after the pandemic crisis, we'll see, uh, because it might be very beneficial. So people from other countries co can also join uh, like you, for example, from Egypt or from, from other uh, places on, on our planet. Uh, so hey, uh, yeah, I invite you to check the websites of the website of our meetings and there are also links to video recordings uh, from our previous uh, events and so, so you can you can for sure you can learn more uh, and uh, I also invite you to join our mailing list uh, follow our uh, fan pages Twitter or LinkedIn blog profiles uh, or just join uh, our uh, slack. Uh, all right, so that was about quantum AI foundation. Uh, and now I will tell you about even more international initiative that is called QWERT. So QWERT is a global network of individuals, groups and communities collaborating on education and implementation of quantum technologies and, and research activities. Uh, so QWERT was established um, in, also in 2019 in, in July um, uh, during the so-called QDrive project. So researchers from uh, Latvia, from University of Riga, uh, were traveling to different cities, different countries in uh, Central and Eastern Europe uh, to just uh, give workshops on basics of, of quantum computing. And then during this QDrive, we also already discussed the idea to uh, just um, organize or establish something like QWERT, so that can be a global network of researchers, groups, individuals collaborating uh, in quantum uh, computing. Uh, and uh, we did it, we did it. And currently uh, we have several interesting initiatives. So our major area of uh, activity are uh, the so-called bronze workshops. Um, so these are uh, workshops uh, rather introductory, I would say. So this is just an introduction to quantum computing. Uh, the typical workshop uh, takes uh, about 20 hours, sometimes a bit a bit less, like 15, sometimes 30. Uh, and uh, it's based on uh, ma uh, materials prepared uh, by uh, several researchers, mostly from Latvia, from University of Riga, uh, but recently also researchers from other countries and other institutes contributed uh, to the training materials. Uh, so uh, on the website uh, to which uh, I pasted the link, uh, you can also see a link to our GitLab repository where we store all these training materials. So these are mostly Jupyter notebooks prepared in, in Python based on a Qiskit library. And uh, so far um, until February 2021, uh, we've organized uh, more than 50 workshops. So in fact, very soon we'll have uh, the workshop number 57, it will be at the beginning of April. And so far we've handed out uh, more than uh, 1500 diplomas. Uh, so usually after our workshops, we also have some tests, exams, relatively simple, uh, just to check whether the participants uh, or what exactly the participants learned and whether they uh, should uh, receive a certificate uh, or not. So we've already handed out more than uh, 1500 uh, certificates. We also organize um, quantum hackathons. Um, there was already at least one such hackathon in Turkey in December 2020. We are going to organize a similar quantum programming hackathon in Poland uh, in August uh, this year. Uh, so it will be online uh, only, so potentially you can, you can also join. I think that this event in Turkey I think it was also online because it was already during the pandemic crisis. Uh, Q Kitchen. Q Kitchen is a mm, sub project within QWERT aiming to uh, prepare new educational materials. So all the materials that we develop are free and open source. Uh, they, they are, there's also open access uh, and uh, we collaborate. We work on these uh, training materials together because uh, so maybe for some countries like uh, US or China, it might be relatively easy 
uh, and cheap to just develop such training materials and just use them at the universities or in high schools. Uh, but uh, for, for smaller uh, countries, it might be challenging uh, to deliver such training materials uh, from scratch or for sure it would take more time. So we decided that uh, it would be much easier to collaborate. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thank, thanks to such a collaboration, everyone can benefit. So not only people from uh, the participating countries, but potentially also from, uh, from other countries. Uh, so there are already uh, currently, I think, at least three or four researchers working on new educational materials. So I've told you about these bronze workshops, which are introductory materials, but recently we've also finished uh, more advanced uh, materials called silver. The next step would be gold, of course, and uh, there will be some um, spin-offs like quantum machine learning uh, workshops as well in the future or maybe some some workshops uh, focusing or an ISQ, so uh, programming uh, noisy intermediate scale um, quantum devices. Uh, so at least this is something that we that we have in plans. Uh, we also support uh, diversity and we would like to involve more and more women and underrepresented group, groups uh, from all over the world. Um, we also invite uh, juniors and we also work on uh, more, um, so a, a bit simpler, a bit simpler, a bit easier, and uh, uh, I guess that uh, more uh, theoretical uh, um, materials for juniors, for, for high school students. Um, because the, the, the bronze workshop is uh, by default uh, addressed to, rather to universities, uh, so if you want to target high school students uh, and uh, if you want to have many people uh, who really just uh, learn something useful uh, so that, for example, they can receive a certificate at the end, uh, then it's we realize that it's, it's better to just uh, prepare a bit simpler version of, of the bronze workshop. Uh, so we also do that. Uh, Q University is another uh, initiative, so in the future we are also going to just launch something that would be called uh, Quantum Semester, so probably before that uh, there will be something like uh, uh, Quantum, there will be some Quantum Computing courses on, on different levels, maybe based on the bronze, silver and gold materials, maybe based on totally different materials, we'll see, so these are just plans for the future. So initially, maybe there will be just single courses, introductory courses, uh, or at least materials for introductory courses, but, but later, eventually, we would like to have materials for the whole quantum semester, uh, composed of uh, five or six uh, different courses. Uh, and finally, uh, at least uh, four quantum semesters for uh, graduate studies. So that's something that we have in plans for the future. And in order to organize our workshops and to train uh, more people uh, who will be just ready and competent to be lecturers uh, during our, uh, our workshops, we also organize from time to time something that is called Q-Mentor training. So we just also train uh, new potential lecturers, uh, new mentors for, for the workshops that we organize. That's also very important. We also have a research department and in the research department there are currently two projects uh, going on. The first is QInter. So the first edition of QInter was in 2020 and the idea is that um, senior researchers from countries uh, associated within QWERT uh, propose some interesting research topics um, on which they can just collaborate together with uh, younger uh, students, younger researchers, graduate students, uh, PhD students, young researchers, and these young researchers from other countries uh, can apply and uh, work remotely on uh, these proposed uh, research projects. So during the first edition, um, this pilot program was run for seven weeks, uh, so it was it was not long. We are now thinking about a bit longer uh, Q intern uh, program for 2021. So we'll see. But anyway, at the end uh, there was something like a demo day 
during which uh, all uh, the participants, all the interns, were just preparing the results of their research, the results of their work over seven weeks, uh, and uh, some awards, some prizes uh, were awarded to best uh, projects and best presentations. So we are going to organize something similar this year, and most likely it will be also organized uh, in the future. Uh, the second project um, from the research department is uh, study groups. So currently we have several study groups uh, focusing on quantum information or quantum machine learning. So we can check the list of existing study groups and potentially uh, when you join QWORT, you can also join the study groups and have meetings um, about once per two weeks uh, to discuss uh, some new interesting papers. But one of one of also most interesting uh, departments within QWORT is Q Cousins department. Uh, so during so at the first slide uh, of my presentation, part of the presentation uh, about QWORT, I mentioned that we are a global network of individuals and local groups collaborating uh, on quantum computing technologies, research, education. Right, so uh, these local groups are important. So of course we can collaborate globally because we can exchange knowledge, we can exchange speakers, uh, we can organize better events, uh, we can organize workshops for more people, we can organize webinars and invite uh, great scientists from many countries. Uh, we can prepare educational materials uh, together, we can organize quantum hackathons together, we may have study groups. So I know that this quantum computing community in Egypt, especially in Alexandria, is very strong. So we already have uh, maybe 10, 20 uh, people who are really very advanced uh, and uh, you already have very strong group and that that's that's perfect. That's really great. Uh, but uh, in many in most of the universities uh, in many countries, it's not that case. So these groups are usually uh, small, so maybe there are just a few scientists working on quantum computing. And in order to just do a real and significant important progress, it's it's important to collaborate and it's, it's important to exchange knowledge. It's important to work together. So currently the current stage of uh, science and technology in many fields is so advanced that it's almost impossible to uh, just achieve uh, some significant uh, progress individually. So we have to collaborate and this is this is rather obvious and for sure by working together we can achieve uh, more both individually and uh, collectively. So currently we have in fact already 14 Q cousins. So officially on, on our websites we have still 11 Q cousins. Uh, so we can see them on a map on this map. Uh, but uh, in fact uh, a few new Q cousins have recently joined us so we are just waiting for the formal announcements that will be will probably happen uh, at the end of this week. And so at least this this is what I what I heard today from from our marketing department. Uh, so Q Morocco, Q India and Q Greece will join us uh, probably this formally this 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 week or in fact they have uh, already joined but it hasn't been announced. And uh, Q Egypt hopefully will be uh, our next uh, Q cousin, uh, because we are planning to have uh, the next entangling event organized for uh, for Egypt. Uh, so this is just an example of a website uh, of a single Q cousin. So in this case, it's, it's Q Poland. So as you can see, I coordinator. We, we have also about 20 members currently. So initially there were maybe only four or five people at the very beginning, but later, of course, this uh, local organization uh, has also grown. So um, now we have much more members uh, and uh, as, I, as I said very soon uh, we'll also have this quantum computing entangling workshop for uh, Egypt. So it's scheduled uh, for uh, the first and second weekend of, uh, of April. So to be exact uh, it will be on Fridays and Saturdays, first to Fridays and first to Saturdays. Um, the lectures will be will be in English. Our lecturer will be uh, Sahar Ben Rashid from from Q Tunisia, but uh, the mentors will be from from Egypt, from Alexandria, and I've checked that we have already about 100 registered participants, 
Uh, so if you are interested uh, and if you would like to join, then of course we still invite you to join. The registration is still open and will be still open for a couple of days. I think up until the 1st of April, as far as I remember. But uh, I mentioned that this workshop will be a um, rather introductory workshop, right? So the first day, uh, in fact, is uh, just or the, the goal of the first day is to give uh, some intuitions, probabilistic intuitions. So the real quantum computing starts from the second day of the, of the workshop. Uh, but you can, you can also check it uh, in our uh, training materials that are available in the GitLab repository. Uh, so, as I said, you can check the details and uh, you are invited to, to join. And if you would like to join Keyword, uh, then of course feel free to uh, just uh, check all our initiatives on our website uh, and uh, follow our profiles on, on Twitter or, or Facebook um, or join our community Slack. So, we've recently also started a Discord server. So very soon we'll be moving from the Slack to, to Discord. Uh, so on the Discord you can also collaborate uh, and, and interact uh, with researchers from many other countries. So currently we have more than 700 people on our Slack. So it's almost 800. And uh, th there are really people from all continents and um, on also on different levels on education and um, with different background. Uh, one interesting thing is that we also have a sponsor. So our official sponsor is Unitary Fund. Um, so yeah, they they uh, granted us some, some money to just help us organize our events. Uh, and uh, I also mentioned at the beginning um, of the talk about uh, the quantum computing ecosystem that uh, there are these four pillars people. So within Keyword, we already have great people. We have almost 800 people on our Slack. Many of them are great researchers. Uh, research, so we also do research. We also have this Q research department within, within Qword. Education, so we organize uh, many workshops. Uh, we organize uh, lectures, webinars. We are preparing a new educational materials, so that is important. And the, the fourth pillar is, uh, is business and um, funding some business real world applications. So uh, I guess that at least some of you have heard about Unitary Fund. So if you have some interesting ideas for research projects that would be open source, because I, as far as I remember, they support only open source projects in quantum computing, uh, feel free to apply for a micro grant. Um, so you can you can check on the website what are the other interesting research projects supported by already by the Unitary Fund. Uh, so we also cl collaborate closely with them. And uh, there are also many other companies working in this domain. I guess that you also heard about uh, most of them. Uh, we are also collaborating quite closely with, with IBM and together with IBM we are even preparing uh, new educational materials based even more on the Qiskit technology, almost entirely on, on Qiskit. Um, but we also uh, had or has organized some webinars on Microsoft technology and QSharp. Uh, we also uh, hosted some some speakers some from Xanadu or Zapata Computing or D-Wave or Igedi. So uh, yeah, there are many interesting companies working in this domain and also contributing to uh, this quantum ecosystem and to building quantum computing ecosystem. Uh, if you want to learn more in general about quantum computing or the quantum ecosystem that we built, you can uh, just check several uh, of the interesting websites or links or groups. I'm also a moderator of the Quantum AI Facebook group where we have right now more than three and a half thousand members. There is also even larger Facebook group, Quantum Information, Quantum Computer Scientists of the World Unite. I think there are more than 12,000 or maybe even more than 15,000 members currently. Quantum computing now is another large group with about 6,000 people, as far as I remember. Uh, we also have a group as a Warsaw Quantum Computing Group. Uh, I guess that you also heard about a Quantum Computing Report, that is a weekly newsletter, which is good to follow because you can learn not only about some interesting 
um, achievements in research on quantum computing, but but also uh, about new startups and companies, uh, new investments in the domain of quantum quantum computing. Swiss Quantum Hub is another uh, another um, such a newsletter. Uh, there's uh, one more, uh, at least one more. <laughs> Uh, organization that uh, is good to mention when we talk about building quantum computing ecosystem is called Curica. They also prepare uh, interesting quantum computing educational resources for quantum computing. They also organize workshops and not all the workshops are free. I guess that most of the workshops are, are not free, uh, but uh, the, the, the material, their materials are also uh, of a high, quite high level. Uh, and high standards, so it's also good to, to follow them to check their, their resources. Uh, and uh, I think that's that's all. So that was an introduction, at least to uh, to the ecosystem, quantum computing ecosystem that I'm also trying to build. So I guess that I just uh, gave you a view on um, on just a relatively small part of this real quantum computing world. Uh, to which I, I'm connected because I'm aware that uh, of the, there are many more initiatives, many more in organizations, foundations working on quantum computing and developing uh, similar ecosystems. Uh, so um, anyway, maybe one day all the researchers working in quantum computing will unite as is indicated by the name of this Facebook group. Uh, so, so maybe they're in the future everything will be will be united but um, this was just to to show you what are the current opportunities and since i know that at least some of you will attend uh, the workshop at the beginning of april this entangling workshop for few egypt then i also wanted to just tell you what you can uh, expect from from keyword after joining keyword and uh, and also from uh, from the workshop uh, so if you have uh, questions then i will happy to answer and i'm open uh, or discussion about building quantum computing ecosystem uh, because I, I know that Karim uh, had some questions and uh, also uh, wanted to facilitate the discussion. But first of all, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Wagen, for thank this you. very interesting talk. Karim? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, uh, there is like a, a, an echo. Perhaps you can. Uh, perhaps you can mute yourself, Mr. Okay. Mr. Pavel. Yes. So maybe I will also stop sharing my slides because it will be more difficult later to turn on my mic. Okay. 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 So uh, in the chat here, uh, I think that there is someone who is called, I think, Mr. Robin. He is saying that uh, he would like to create Q Piro in, in South America. So um, I think, uh, I think, uh, would you like me to, to unmute him? Uh, yes, yes, uh, of course, you can unmute him. And uh, we are open, of course, on such opportunities okay. on, on our, on, I can, I can say that on our Slack channel, uh, we have on our Slack profile, we have uh, a channel called Q Latin America because there are already many researchers from Latin America. Uh, as you have seen on the map, we've already established Q Mexico, uh, but there are also several people from Colombia. I'm not sure about Peru, but uh, anyway, if you would like to establish Q Peru, uh, then um, so uh, anyway, the, the general uh, the general rule is that there should be at least uh, two members of a Q cousin. So uh, if you are interested, then also feel free to just check our website, the website about this Q cousin program, uh, and then you can read the guidelines for new Q cousins. So in the guidance, you will find information that there should be at least two members. So I, in case of Egypt, we have maybe 20 people or even more. Uh, and uh, and the, the members of the Q cousins should have also strong connections with, with academia. Uh, so at least one person should be a senior researcher or at least a PhD student, PhD candidate. So a, a person affiliated at the university. Uh, and it's also good to uh, just uh, have at least one person who has already, has already completed one of our uh, previous 
workshops. So, uh, yeah, but but anyway, uh, we invite you, of course, to, to form uh, QPERO. We invite you uh, for a discussion about it. Uh, so if you have any questions, I will be happy to, to answer. Okay, thank you so much for your answer. Uh, I think that uh, he he should at least uh, contact you directly using your email or perhaps join uh, a keyword on Slack or Discord directly. Uh, there is another question from Mr. Pinar Patton. Uh, he says that, is there people or are there people from Canada and USA? Uh, yes, so on our Slack within these 770 people, we have people from USA and Canada. Uh, and uh, in fact, we are also discussing um, forming QUSA or Q Canada, mostly QSA, in fact, uh, with several researchers, but uh, it was it's it's quite uh, difficult in case of of USA. So I believe that in case at least in case of USA, I'm not sure about Canada, but at least in case of USA, it's possible that we'll have to organize it in a bit different way because USA is very large and there are uh, many universities, uh, so. Initially, we thought that maybe it would be better to just have a separate Q cousin for each state in the US. Uh, but later we figure out that for some states it will not be possible. So that's in, in some states uh, there will be not um, sufficient, uh, uh, suffi there will not be sufficient group, right, uh, to just form uh, such a Q cousin. So later we started thinking that maybe there might be some, let's say, conferences or divisions uh, based on, uh, I think there was a division prepared by uh, American Physical Society, but there are also similar, similar divisions in uh, professional sport competitions like NBA or NHL, right? So the whole USA or Canada also is, is divided into six uh, divisions, as far as I remember. So maybe that that would be better because uh, we we think based on the current discussions with with different people from from USA we see that it might be difficult to just uh, uh, create such a group for the for for just for the whole USA. So it's it's still possible. So we still consider it as an option. And in fact, currently we are discussing this opportunity with um, with a, with a group from Washington, uh, from Washington DC. So uh, we had the conversation about it on Monday, uh, and uh, it's it's possible that uh, the QUSA uh, will be entangled uh, in 2021. We'll see, but it hasn't been decided yet. So of course, forming a Q cousin uh, is is a responsibility. So uh, not everyone is willing to just take this responsibility, right? Because when you form a Q cousin, then we in QWorld also encourage you and we want you to be active, to organize uh, events, to organize workshops, to move forward. And uh, not everyone uh, wants to take this responsibility. And in fact, uh, in case of the whole US, <laughs> it might be a really a huge responsibility to just uh, organize such a group uh, for the whole country. But regarding I Canada, I, yes, Canada, Canada, yeah. Canada is a bit different. Canada is a bit different case. Uh, and uh, so regarding regarding Canada, in fact, we haven't. Uh, we also haven't found uh, a good uh, person willing to just uh, take this responsibility yet. So if you know someone from Canada who might be interested or you know someone from US, then feel free to contact us. In fact, our goal is indeed to have at least 50 Q cousins until the end of 2023. So within the next two and a half or three years, we would like to grow and uh, have about 50 Q cousins worldwide. Um, great, thanks. Thanks a lot for your answer. Uh, I think that uh, Mr. Ahmad would like to, uh, to, to ask a question. Uh, I think you can unmute yourself right now. Um, you can talk, I think. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you can hear me, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, 
uh, first of all, I want to thank Kareem and Professor Ahmed uh, Yunus uh, for hosting such event, and I also I want to thank uh, uh, Professor Powell uh, for for such a uh, informative uh, presentation. Thank you a lot. Uh, actually, I have a question about uh, the X system that uh, you talked about uh, in, in, in the, uh, at the first of the presentation. Uh, you said that uh, you are, we we are building an X system which is based on people, education, research, and business. Uh, yeah. Nowadays, business. Uh, the first aspect uh, we can talk about is business. Uh, um, uh, most of the companies nowadays, most of the multinational companies are like moving forward to using quantum computing in a lot of uh, facets uh, of technology, maybe like machine learning, maybe blockchain, uh, etc. Uh, research, most of the people or most of the professors in uh, in the world, whatever the university is, uh, are doing their best uh, on, uh, on on the research side. Uh, however, we ha I think maybe we are having two problems uh, in such X system, uh, which which are the people and education. Um, maybe uh, uh, the education here, I mean, um, for those who want to study quantum computing, but or quantum technology, but they don't know how to start, and also people. Um, uh, how can I say this? Um, People are like, uh, there are a lot of measures out there uh, in the field of the technology, in the field of uh, uh, maybe programming, uh, if, we're to, if, we're to, if we are talk, uh, taking a programming field as an example, where we can uh, uh, apply the quantum technology in it. Uh, so people like maybe uh, he's working in software, uh, uh, maybe he's, he's working as a software developer uh, or a software engineer, uh, maybe a machine learning engineer and you know how rapid these uh, major are uh, these measures are like moving forward there there are not plenty of time to apply quantum technology uh, or maybe like grasping as much as we can uh, from quantum technology to apply uh, in, in such uh, fields uh, in addition to education education here i mean uh, the curriculum, and maybe the students that uh, uh, the students they are studying in the university, uh, it's totally, um, it's not like, um, it's not tangible uh, in any way with with uh, with with quantum technology. How how can we solve such problems? Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> in fact, I, I guess that the, the workshops and the, the training materials, I, I guess one of one of the might be one of the answers, right? So, indeed, the current uh, educational programs, both in academia and at the universities and in, in high schools, uh, are not adjusted to, uh, to to quantum computing, and this is uh, even even to give some good quantum intuitions, in fact. Right. So, and this is also something that we uh, try to solve by organizing these workshops. Right. So, uh, we just in these workshops that we organize, we start from the real basics. So, we don't uh, really assume uh, the knowledge of any quantum things. So, just the basic knowledge of uh, mathematics, uh, probability, linear algebra. Uh, and uh, some basics of Python, of course, just to write uh, programs in, in Qiskit. Uh, and uh, so, of course, we organize these workshops, uh, and these workshops are open and are free, so everyone can join. But uh, as, I, as I also mentioned, we would like at some point to just start these quantum semesters, right? So based on our experience and based on the experiences of people from, from different countries, because I think that this is maybe also one of the greatest values of Qword, that uh, it is composed of people from different countries, different count cultures, they have be different backgrounds. Uh, so thanks to that, when we collaborate, we can uh, not only just uh, prepare educational materials and pre prepare educational programs for universities or high schools faster, but potentially we can also do it uh, better and it can be also synchronized uh, maybe not necessarily all over the world, but at least uh, in, in some countries, right? Uh, so we are also aware that uh, there are some quantum programs. For example, recently we heard 
So th this is also one of the issues with the US. So in the US, uh, there is there are also some quantum uh, programs aiming to teach even high school students in the US. So that is something that we recently learned that uh, there are already such such programs for high school students in the US. Uh, so that may be also another thing that. Uh, so the first thing is whether these educational materials are uh, uh, are compatible, let's say, right? So uh, whether we teach people correctly and which approach is, is better because there might be totally different approaches. So in our approach, I would say that this approach starts in fact uh, from uh, some basics of probability and uh, rather automata theory, I would say. So it's it's not a standard approach for introduction to quantum computing. Uh, and so it's it, so we can thanks to the fact that we can share our experience from different countries. Potentially we can also prepare better materials. But but just to summarize, yeah, we we hope that uh, at some point we'll be able to just go to academia and say that okay, we have these educational materials that are prepared. And then uh, universities may start offering uh, these quantum semesters or quantum courses or even special programs, special studies, graduate studies uh, for for these students focusing on quantum computing. And another thing is that at some point there might be some incentives from business. So even recently, uh, I or I was recently contacted by several companies which just came to me and said that uh, we would like to establish a research group at the University of Warsaw. Uh, but we want this research group. We can, we can even found stipends. We can even found this research group. But we want this research group to focus uh, specifically on applications of quantum computing in one specific area, right? Uh, so then when you go to the university and uh, recently I had a discussion with our dean and rector about it. Uh, and um, they, they heard about it, they realized that, uh, OK, this company may found not only uh, stipends for, for the students, but also they can found an access to quantum computing technology from IBM. Uh, they changed their mind a bit because before that, they were thinking that quantum computing technology, uh, that this quantum revolution is still many, many years from now. So there, we, we still have a lot of time. Uh, but now when we see that, as you said, uh, there are many companies already established, there are many startups working on quantum computing technology, and then I can see that also academia realized that it, it, it's not just a fashion. It's not something that will be popular for two or three years, but this is something that may just uh, stay with us for many years, and it's uh, good to just invest, to just develop uh, and invest in preparation of educational materials and have uh, uh, specialist courses on quantum computing, right? So I believe that it's it will might be an evolution that would be rather triggered by the business needs. Uh, and I, I think that it was also a similar case with artificial intelligence, or at least I, uh, I, I, I think that in Poland it went that way that uh, initially, uh, this new deep learning revolution was implemented by companies and startups in Poland. And just one or two years later, um, it was just implemented at the university. So there, there were just some students association because people started realizing that it's important for business. Um, so I believe that it may go in case of quantum computing, it may go in a similar way. Uh, but one important thing uh, to, to know that or to realize is that there might be also some differences because in case of artificial intelligence, we already know that there might be some specific applications of the technology uh, of new machine learning, deep learning models, for example, and many companies uh, may have already benefits from that. But in case of quantum computing, it's possible that these real uh, advantages, real applications, may just appear in maybe 10 years from now or maybe 15 years from now. Some people are even more skeptic about it. So they, some, I still know some people who just don't believe that uh, quantum computing will just bring an advantage. Like they, they think that this is just a hype and after 10 or 15 years, um, it will look totally different, right? So that will not really achieve this advantage. 
but the competences will remain. So I also think that the education is a really a foundation of everything, because when we educate people, they at least know the basics and then no matter, it's, it's not that important whether there will be such real world applications or not. They will already have uh, the background and uh, they will be able to do a research and potentially, uh, as I also said on uh, one of my slides, even if there will be no such real world applications of quantum computing, most likely it will mean that we've discovered something totally new for which, for example, they might be even a Nobel Prize in physics or a Turing Award, right? So that uh, we discovered or we, we, for example, we proved that there might be some polynomial algorithms for problems that we believe that are uh, not solvable in polynomial time or that uh, maybe there's some exist some laws of physics that may just prevent building much uh, larger quantum computers than uh, the machines that we have now, right? So we'll see, but anyway, for sure we'll have a uh, progress uh, and for sure we'll have better knowledge. So that's why I also think that the education is the most important. Uh, and it's it's possible that initially this education will be also just triggered and uh, driven by by business. It's possible, uh, but uh, based on the our experience and also thanks to the education materials that we develop together, we believe that at some point we'll be able to just bring uh, this education to academia and high school. I hope that it, it answers the question. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your uh, for your input. It's, it's amazing. So, uh, is there anyone else who would like to say uh, anything or ask any question? Yeah, I'll take the benefit that uh, people are trying to write their questions. Uh, okay, I I'll, I'll take the question, but let me ask this first to uh, Pavel. Uh, actually, I think one of the main problems to build the ecosystem that uh, uh, people from uh, multidisciplinary are trying to join the community. Um, and actually, I think uh, one of the uh, major obstacles is that they cannot understand each other. If you if you uh, can imagine that people from example, from physics, from mathematics background, from computer science, from engineering, they are all trying to join the community. They are interested in the quantum computing technology. Uh, but uh, they don't have a unified notation and basic concepts. So I think yes. one of the uh, efforts that we have to do in, in, in Q world, for example, or in, in any community is try to unify the concept to have to uh, base our, our flavor, uh, not related to computer science, not related to uh, engineering or physics, but to quantum computing uh, flavor. I think this will uh, be a, a, a milestone, strong milestone for building uh, the ecosystem. OK, yes, yes, I agree. And I also realized even recently one one colleague from Warsaw University Technology, who is also he, he has recently also founded a startup in Poland and he's specializing in uh, building components for quantum computers based on ion traps. Uh, he wanted to also establish collaboration with researchers from one of these one of the scientific institutes uh, in in Poland, but uh, he realized so that the researchers in this institute were just uh, um, physicists, of course, but uh, theoretical physicists, I would say. Uh, so he he said that uh, he realized that they just okay they they both uh, they, they just talk also on quantum computing, but uh, they just understand it totally differently. They just understand it from a theoretical point of view. And uh, in his opinion, uh, he just didn't see how they can help him in building uh, real operational quantum computers. Uh, so that's why eventually he told me that he decided to start collaboration with another research group from another city. Uh, so I agree that this is, this is a challenge, but I also believe that also thanks to this collaboration, thanks to uh, collaborating on preparing educational materials because when we prepare educational materials we all have to agree on what how this educational material should look like so we should ensure that we all believe that these materials are correct so there might be people from mathematics with background in math and they can just give their input people from physics may give their input people from computer science may give another input and, and then based thanks to that uh, we can 
develop our common language uh, and, and common understanding of, of different concepts. And uh, I personally think that I've already learned a lot thanks to organizing such, such workshops. Because even during our workshops, we also had mentors coming from different backgrounds and different domains. Uh, and I already learned a lot from them and I realized that they really understand quantum uh, quantum computing in a totally different way. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, even as, as I said, even it's, it's not obvious how to teach quantum computing, even how to teach the basics. So I said that in case of these bronze materials, we rather start from uh, from automata and from probabilistic states. And uh, as far as I know, it's it's not a typical approach to learn quantum computing, but uh, some people thought about it and they decided that it might be easier uh, to just learn uh, people from high school. So it will be easier for them to just understand it. So it's it's easier, better than just to trying to explain them what, what are the Hilbert space spaces or uh, unitary vectors. So <laughs> it would be more difficult for, for them if we start from something like this. So, so, so that's why uh, they said that it's good to start from automata and probabilistic states, which is not that obvious that it might be a good approach. Uh, but uh, so, so far, uh, ba based on our current experience, it looks that uh, people from high school are able to understand it. And in, in fact, it's... Uh, so for example, in Poland, we organized a workshop dedicated address to uh, people from high schools. It was in January uh, and uh, more than 200 people registered and we handed out about 90 diplomas. So it was quite a lot. So uh, about half of all the registered people were able to just learn uh, to such a degree that they, they were and understand the technology, the material to such a degree that they were able to later achieve at least half of the points in the final test. Right, so we think that it it's, uh, proves that it might be good approach. But even if we organize our workshops, that that's also something that we uh, that we realized. There are also people uh, and even high school students uh, who have totally different uh, backgrounds. And for example, there was one student who is already uh, very advanced in computer science, and he participated even in the. International Olympiad in, in computer science and informatics, and he uh, brought some medals uh, from this International Olympiad. And he told us after the first day that the pace of the workshops is just too, too slow for him. So it's it's just too easy for him. But at the same time, there were maybe 20, 30 people who just told us that they just totally don't understand. So that this this material is too difficult for them. <laughs> right, so it, it's it, it's also not not easy uh, to just find this uh, gold uh, gold gold point uh, and uh, just to also organize such workshops in a in appropriate way. So you can also potentially we will organize this entangling workshop for Egypt for people from Egypt, and perhaps most likely you will also realize that uh, for some people from academia from Alexandria University. It's very possible that th this material will be very simple, right? Very easy, at least the first two days, let's say. Uh, but for, for some people from some smaller countries and without access to universities, uh, it's that it may turn out that it will be even too difficult for them. So it may also happen. So. Uh, so it, it's possible, and I guess this is also important when you will be organizing your own events, your own workshops. Uh, it may be also uh, important to just uh, maybe organize smaller works workshops, but focused on specific groups, right? So, for example, uh, for sure there should be different workshops for people from high schools and different workshops, different materials uh, for people from academia, from universities. So that that that's that's rather obvious, but maybe even in case of people from high schools, then maybe there should be also at least two uh, levels of difficulty, right? So you can you can we can also think about it. Uh, so that that's why we also have this Q Junior department within QWORT, right? Uh, so in fact, we are still just organizing this department, and so it's also relatively early stage, 
and in fact we haven't we haven't really discussed yet uh, how the training materials for high school students should look like right so what exactly should be included which which notebooks because in the gitlab repository you will realize that we have uh, about 80 90 jupyter notebooks but for the workshops we use maybe um 20 of them only right so, and for each workshop we just review the notebooks once again and then make a decision which subset of these uh, notebooks would be appropriate for a given workshop uh, yeah so I I indeed it's it's challenging to just uh, find a common language and maybe maybe just taking into account that people are on different levels and with different backgrounds sometimes maybe even not possible to just satisfy everyone <laughs> all right all right thank you thank you so much for your answers it is very descriptive uh, so uh, is there anyone else who would like to say anything or ask any question Just a second. Um, okay, I think that uh, Dr. Muhammad can can actually uh, unmute himself right now. You can have you. Hello, everybody. Uh, you can hear me. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, um, Mathematically, uh, the quantum al algorithms give be, uh, give better results than the classical algorithms. This is because quantum polarism allows to execute all possible inputs at once. But uh, you say it's difficult to prove this uh, physically. Uh, is the reason because we uh, don't define the suitable architectures on the different existing quantum machines like PM, the, like IBM and the D waves, or another reasons. Okay, so th there might be several reasons. So uh, when I talk about it, I rather I was rather thinking about um, theoretical proofs. So for example, I gave this Shor algorithm as an example. So in case of Shor algorithm, we know that. Uh, there is an algorithm, quantum algorithm, that can just factorize numbers, uh, large numbers, in polynomial time. Uh, and we just expect that no such classical algorithms exist, but uh, it hasn't been proven yet. So we just, we just don't know uh, such algorithm, and we expect that there are no such algorithm, no such polynomial algorithm. And based on this assumption, uh, we also designed uh, many cryptography protocols, right? So these several cryptography protocols uh, that are even used in practice are based uh, on the assumption that the problem of factorizing large numbers is very computationally difficult for classical computers, but it hasn't been formally proven. So, so here I rather also mean about formal, theoretical, mathematical proofs that some algorithms can be uh, really can can really uh, give advantage over classical algorithms uh, because mo most of the current uh, cases when we know that there might be some um, some advantages like let's say Grover's algorithm for example um, we we know that they may have some applications but uh, also even these applications are not that that obvious so this is one thing and another thing is as you said. Uh, is that um, there might so even if we know in theory that some algorithms may just give advantage, then uh, of course we it's possible that the advantage may be only um, uh, let, let's say uh, in, in square, a square improvement of, of the computational time, but, but not necessarily exponential improvement. So the square improvement, okay, it is an improvement, but it's still, it, it may turn out that uh, the problem is still invisible, for example. Uh, but, but also, even if we know that uh, some algorithms may bring uh, advantage, then uh, we cannot, so most likely we'll still have to wait for many years after uh, the quantum computers will be powerful enough to just uh, really uh, give us advantage in practice. So, for example, in some cases, so 
in, in case of a D-Waves machine, uh, there were some, for example, applications uh, of, of D-Waves machine to solve uh, the vehicle routing problem. And that is something that I already uh, talked about during one of the uh, meetups organized by Alexandre Quantum Computing Group, right? So I, I told about quantum annealing algorithms for solving combinatorial optimization problems. But even if in the paper that was published by D-Wave, they just didn't do any comparison with classical computers. And uh, it, it will turn out that it turns out that, uh, OK, they can run this algorithm only with some certain uh, simplifications, some assumptions that uh, make this problem feasible for, quant for current quantum computers, but only, again, only in relatively small scale with 400 vehicles. Uh, with 1,000 vehicles, it would not be feasible uh, on, on that machine um, at, at the moment when the experiment was, was conducted, at least. Uh, but um, um, yeah, so uh, again, I, I think that also one of the reasons is that our classical computers are all also very powerful, right? Because we work on classical computers for more, we, more than uh, 70 years right so so the first computers appeared more than 70 years ago uh, and uh, the classical computers are already quite advanced so that, that this is also one of the reasons why uh, it's it's difficult and it will be still difficult for at least several years for quantum computers to really uh, gave us an advantage in practice right so so we may need much more logical qubits right uh, and, and again, another obstacle that I mentioned that uh, we have uh, better and better quantum machines with more qubits, but uh, we usually talk about uh, uh, classic, uh, about physical qubits, and it's not the same as logical qubits because we still need error correction codes, right? Uh, so in fact, uh, most likely we'll still have to wait uh, for a couple of years at least until there will be some real advantages in practice over classical computers. Thank you, Thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, just a few comments about uh, this, um, uh, uh, Dr. Mohammed. Actually, um, because uh, uh, the polynomial uh, uh, class uh, is not proved to be subset or equal to the NB, uh, B is which is one of the uh, unsolved problems in theoretical computer science. That's why we we, we cannot show NB complete is still NB complete in quantum computing and in classical computing. So uh, 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 we hope that quantum computing is stronger than classical, but there is no formal proof yet. So that's it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 is there any questions for uh, for Bavel? Um, actually, I, I, I only have one question. Uh, can, can, can I ask it? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, regarding, you know, the uh, the uh, like the managerial uh, level of of uh, of handling, you know, the the ecosystem or the community itself. Uh, does the agile way uh, work in that case? I mean. You know, combining researchers and also, you know, people from industry together. So uh, is the agile way the best way to, to, to handle, you know, the flow of information uh, and, uh, you know, not only the flow of information. I mean, uh, for example, when you organize something, uh, is it is it a good way to to to, uh, to adapt the agile way of of uh, of handling things in, in software companies and apply that or adapt that in, into uh, the ecosystem itself? Or is there like another better way? I mean, based based on your activity, you already have like, you, you already have the uh, Quantum AI Foundation. Uh, you also have uh, Q Poland and and, uh, and uh, the Q World. So uh, what is the best managerial way that you are following? <laughs> So it's it's a tricky question because uh, in fact I just don't follow any standard and good good managerial practices I would say 
Um, so because because the, the problem is that these are just some of my current initiatives, so I also don't have uh, enough time. And sometimes it happens that, for example, I need to take one or two weeks break and when I just don't have time to just or, or and also don't want to focus on anything in uh, uh, in QWERT or Quantum AI Foundation because I need to focus on something else. So it, it also happens. Um, but uh, when I so, so that's why I would rather say say that our uh, activities are rather uh, project driven, I would say. So for example, organizing um, workshop for Q Egypt is such a project. And for this project, there are two or three people who are responsible. So in this case, uh, I am one of uh, such people and also uh, Sahar, who will be the lecturer, is also another person from QWERT. And there is also you, Karim, and uh, maybe also Ahmed. I am not rem don't remember if who, who are who is exactly formally among the organizers, but there are members, organizers from 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 QWERT and from uh, from Q Egypt. And as you as you can see, we just rather have some specific tasks like start prepare all the materials, and it was prepared by by Aga. Later, we had to start advertising the event. We we did it. Uh, soon we'll start sending invitations to people, right? So we'll have to prepare. Most likely it will be a Discord or or Slack. So it's also up to you. And um, then we will start uh, inviting people. Uh, and then um, then we'll have the workshop. So um, yeah, so I, I would say that we just for, for each such project, we have some a list of specific tasks. Uh, and there are some people responsible for uh, for specific tasks. Uh, and we also have some speci specific uh, dates, deadlines also for, for the task, right? So um, that's that's why uh, I don't think that we just follow some uh, an agile way. So maybe you can call it agile uh, if you if you want. But I, I so I also collaborate with some uh, software IT companies in Poland, and I, I know that this is not a way uh, of uh, just organizing um, professional software projects in IT companies, uh, but um, it's it's hard to say. So uh, just uh, applying any formal methodology, in my opinion, would require more time commitment. So I, I believe that th this is a problem because all the work that we do in QWERT currently is totally a volunteering work. So we just doing we just do that after some other works like uh, after our courses at the university or, or after completing some other tasks that we have. So this is just a non-profit voluntary work. So I, I'm not sure if such an agile and more formal methodology would work uh, uh, in case of such volunteering projects uh, in the long term. So I, I apply uh, such a methodology in some cases. So, for example, now we organize this quantum hackathon in Q Poland, and indeed we have something like that. So maybe instead of uh, having planning meetings once per week, we have such meetings once per two weeks. Uh, but I would say that this is some kind of uh, some kind of formal managerial uh, approach uh, because uh, this quantum hackathon would be just too uh, too big event to just organize it in a different way, I believe. So I, I guess that it, it basically depends on a specific uh, specific project and also your time availability. OK, okay. thank you so much for your uh, for your uh, answer. Uh, I think that uh, we have already passed, uh, you know, the uh, the, uh, the time. So uh, if there is anyone who would like to ask something, I think that uh, Mr. Pavel has shared uh, with you all uh, his contact details, so please contact him directly or you can join Q World or uh, you can actually uh, join us uh, in, uh, in the entangling uh, workshop on uh, on Q Egypt. Uh, I have uh, put in the chat here uh, the Q Egypt form and also the Hibatia playlist uh, for the past two, uh, two uh, talks. Uh, another uh, another agree thing I believe is that uh, uh, the following Hepatia talk is going to be uh, about 
partially quantum machine learning and also quantum chemistry, so stay tuned for this. And finally, uh, I would like to thank Mr. Pavel uh, for, for, for his great presentation and his descriptive and very informative answers to us. And uh, thanks a lot for your attendance. Uh, I think that uh, perhaps uh, Professor Yunus would like to say uh, a word and, and then uh, I will stop the recording. Uh, I'd like to thank Pavel again for um, uh, joining us again uh, uh, for this time. It will not be the last time, of course. And uh, um, I'm looking forward for Q Egypt Tangent Workshop uh, and uh, for many coming projects. Uh, uh, and thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you once again for uh, the invitation, for your attendance. Uh, and, and all your all your questions. I hope you enjoyed uh, this talk and discussion. And uh, yeah, I hope to uh, see you during the entangling workshop and later looking forward for our uh, future collaboration within QWERT and uh, in maybe also some other quantum computing projects. Thank you once again. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. I'll, stop, I'll stop the recording now.